Well, hi, everybody. It's Dr. Gymnatis again from Cardiovascular Interventions. And uh, this is an introduction to a three-part series that I've made on shopping and choices that you make when you go out shopping over this holiday season. And of course, the whole emphasis here is to buy real food. And my emphasis is always to eliminate sugar, artificial ingredients, all processed foods, all processed vegetable seed oils, and buy foods that are in their natural state full of fiber. So I hope you enjoy this. It's in a three-part series. And uh, if you need more information, I've put lots of links at the bottom of this video. And I hope you enjoy it and have a good, healthy shopping season. Thank you. So let's move on here. I have some bread. Now, bread is a processed food. The flour is so refined that it literally, when you put that piece of toast or bread in your mouth, your sugar is already going up. It's not whole wheat. It's not whole grain. And because they've processed it so much, they have to re-add all the ingredients in here. So it says that it's got malted barley flour, niacin, iron, thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, uh, honey, wheat gluten, sugar, wheat bran, soybean oil, wheat flour, salt, soy flour, calcium sulfate, monoglycerides, enzymes, monocalcium phosphate, soy lecithin, excuse me, thiamine, reduced iron, thiamine mononitrate as well, folic acid and calcium carbonate. I think that was about 25 ingredients. Bread should be bread. It should be simple. It should be made out of flour. It should be whole grain flour and water and a few other ingredients, that's it. This is way too many other ingredients. Glycemic index is way too high. So my advice to most people if you wanna be healthy is avoid baked products if you are not healthy. Now, if you're perfectly healthy and everything's okay, your weight is perfect, all your parameters are okay, yes, you can have some toast, you can have some, some cookies once in a while. But for most of us who are struggling to either keep our weights down or stay healthy, or we have chronic inflammatory diseases, connective tissue disease, inflammatory bowel disease, we should avoid flour in general. Glycemic index is too high, and many people, knowingly or unknowingly, are actually very sensitive to the wheat products. So there are blood tests that I can do to see if you are sensitive to gluten or wheat, other wheat products. But those are expensive tests. They can be done and we do do them. But better still, I tell patients, do an elimination diet. If you're not feeling well, you have connective tissue disease, if you have a weight problem, if you have high blood pressure, if you have metabolic syndrome, for two weeks, eliminate all flour and see how you do. And most patients come back to me and say, oh my goodness, I feel lighter, I feel better, my stomach is not so bloated. You don't need to get diarrhea from eating this to be sensitive to it. You just, you will find that you'll lose weight and inflammation will go down. So with some toast, most people put something on it. They can put uh, uh, butter on it or they put peanut butter. Peanut butter, I was looking at the ingredients of peanut butter over here and it's very nice, it's got uh, uh, only two grams of sugar per serving. So what's the magic number for sugar per serving? If you're going to look at this label, you got to look at the sugar. It says total sugar, two grams. This is the one you want. Always be less than five grams per serving. If you do that in general, anything you pick up, if it says more than five grams of sugar per serving, put it away. It's not good for you. Whether you're diabetic or not, it doesn't matter. It's no good for you. Don't do it. So let's take uh, another sample. What, what's this? We have some chips over here. And this is, of course, man-made and it's processed. And it's got, look at the total fat content. These chips have seven grams of total fat, of which only half a gram is saturated. So the rest is polyunsaturated. So what does that mean? Well, the old dictum was, polyunsaturated fats are good for you, saturated fats are bad for you. You've been taught that. You've heard that for all these years. Well, the answer is wrong. No, it's the polyunsaturated fats, especially in the large amounts that we consume today, that are bad for you. See, polyunsaturated fats only came about 
on the scene at the turn of the century, especially with things like cottonseed oil, when they didn't know what to do with all those seeds, and they started extracting through industrial processes the oil. Then we started feeding that to the people. And uh, what we've found now is that it actually causes inflammation in the body. Oh, too much omega-6. The ratio of omega-6, which is pro-inflammatory, to omega-3 is way off the charts. If you look at the contents of our foods from just 50 years ago also. Polyunsaturated fats get into your lining of each cell membrane and alters the way the cell membrane functions. And it is prone to oxidation because it's unsaturated. So the bonds, chemical bonds that are available for interaction. Because of that, this interaction and oxidation process occurs on your cells. Your cells become dysfunctional. They can't work normally. Saturated fats are infinitely preferable than polyunsaturated fats. So whenever we look at the fat studies to see that, oh, high fat diet caused low grade endotoxemia, for example, leaky gut and lipopolysaccharides get into the bloodstream and it's all from saturated fats. Uh, we have to be more careful. We need to look to see what kind of fats were we talking about. There needs to be a clarification. Fats are not just fats. There's trans fats, which are now of course banned and nobody should eat trans fats. Polyunsaturated fats are a problem. Saturated fats have been with us for thousands of years and there was no evidence of coronary artery disease in most civilizations before the turn of the century until these vegetable seed oils came onto the market. So let's look at some of these vegetable oils. So these oils are extracted from seeds and they call them vegetable oils. Not from vegetables, they're from seeds. So whether it's soy oil or whether it's um, uh, cottonseed oil or whether it's groundnut oil, maize oil or corn oil, or soybean oil, uh, even canola oil. These are all manufactured oils full of omega-6. And this must be avoided. Whenever we're cooking, we should not use this oil. Use butter. Use butter wherever you can. And your patients will be he healthier, you will be healthier, your children will be healthier. So vegetable seed oils. Now, all processed foods have vegetable seed oils. So I was eating mixed nuts at home, and I looked at the ingredients, and the number one ingredient was cottonseed oil. And then came the peanut and the other nuts. So the primary ingredient was actually oil. So I got rid of them. So I only buy natural, uh, untreated, normal, raw nuts. So I eat walnuts, pecans, and uh, I avoid all the roasted nuts because they're roasted in the bad oil. So you've got to start reading the labels. No vegetable oils. Now, let's look at these here. These are some, uh, what are these, uh, cookies. So these cookies in general, very, very bad. Let's look at the content of the uh, foods in here. So this label needs to be read very carefully. The dietary fiber here, less than one gram. There's hardly any fiber in here. Sugar, total carbs, 20 grams. Total sugar that's added is 11 grams. So 20 grams of carbs. How many, how many teaspoons of sugar is that? So one teaspoon of sugar is four grams. So that would be five teaspoons of sugar. That means one serving of this cookie is five teaspoons of sugar. Would you in your right mind give your child five teaspoons of sugar? No. Would you give your, your child a drink that has 10 teaspoons of sugar in it? Absolutely not. This needs to be avoided. We need to start this now with our children and in our own homes. We need to start avoiding it. Here's another package. This package is also about cookies. And I'm going to take a look at the, the contents here. Let's read this label. Total carbohydrates is 22 grams. Total sugars again, added sugar, 11 grams. Total 22. That means 22 times four, that's 88. So the total calories in here is 160 minutes. Half the calories are coming from carbohydrates. Let's look at the fat content. Total fat is eight grams. Fat is nine calories per gram. So that is eight times nine, 81. That's, that's the number of calories you're getting from pure fat. So this is pure fat, most of it polyunsaturated and sugar. This is not a health food. 
should not be consumed. All right, so we come here and we have some more drinks. What did I say about juices and lemonade? Absolutely not. Look at the sugar content, 110 calories, of which all of it is pure carbohydrates. It's so high. Energy drinks. Look, folks, these are not what they made out to be. You want energy? Take care of your mitochondria. Don't turn them off. The way you get energy is to avoid the sugar. You'll have more energy. These will give you, with the artificial ingredients in it, a temporary high. And you're always going to pay a price. There's no such thing as a free ride. You're not going to have energy drinks and feel great the rest of the day. In fact, you're going to feel terrible two hours later. So it's not worth it. What you need to do is to redo your mitochondria. Your mitochondria, which is the energy source. So how do you do that? How do you make your mitochondria happy? Your mitochondria need the right substrate. So the way you do that is feast and then fast. Not too much sugar because you overwhelm the mitochondria. You have to feast and fast. When you're fasting, the mitochondria get a break. You're going to go into some degree of ketogenesis. So am I pro-ketogenesis? The answer is yes. There is a condition of dietary ketogenesis. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this short series and don't forget to watch the other two videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because there's going to be lots of good educational materials coming on. And also look at the bottom. There's lots of links to other videos. So have a great, healthy, happy holiday. <music>